tells me to use a six millimeter crochet hook, but uh, eggplant, butterscotch. Why does it say eggplant? Oh, maybe that's for the pattern here. Never mind. Michelle here, also known as Fancy Dyes or Tea Party, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to do the waffle stitch. So this video is teaching you how to learn the waffle stitch for crocheting, but also I'm going to make a really cute bag. The main inspiration for me doing this bag is that uh, Stranger Things Season 4 is coming out in a few weeks. I am excited for this. I have been re-watching all the seasons, and I didn't realize that I haven't watched the season since the third season came out, which was back in 2019. Let me just show you what I'll be making in this video. This this bag. This is everything that I wanted in a bag. So cute. What I'm going to start doing in my crocheting tutorial videos is that I'm actually going to start with showing you what I'm going to make. So then that way you know what you're in for in this video if the thumbnail didn't already give it away. And then that way I can give you a few little tips and tricks before you actually start working on your project. I absolutely love it. It's so cute. It's everything that I wanted in a bag and more. I even went above and beyond and put a liner in this bag. I know. Included in this video, I will be giving you diagrams of what I'm going to be making, the measurements of every piece, as well as like all the steps and everything that you're going to need for this project. So I'm just going to give you a little rundown before we get into it. There are four different elements in this bag that I will be showing you. One, obviously, the waffle knit. If you are a beginner crocheter, or you might just think that this crochet stitch might be a little confusing. Fear not, it's all double crochets. It's just all double crochets. And I do go step by step in this video on how to do this. Waffle stitch for this. The handles are actually going to be just single crochet. This little square of butter, which I think is just the perfect little touch to this bag, also just single crocheting. And then of course the inside of the bag, I used a pillowcase and then I hand sewed it, but I also did put it through my sewing machine. This inside is a step that you can do or you don't need to do. I do explain why I included it in this bag in the video. This bag is probably one of the easier crocheting projects that I've done, even though it might look a little complicated. It's it's not. And also, I do want to give you a little heads up. If you are doing the butter patch, it does matter where you place it on your bag. I mean, you technically can put it anywhere you want, but if you're going to hold your bag like this, I want the butter to be in the front. But if I put it over here, it would be like in the back and my hand would cover it. So that's just a little tip before you start doing this project is just pay attention to where you put your little butter square if you decide to put a butter square on your bag like I did. Really quickly, I do want to go over the yarn for the butter and the straps. I did use a medium four weight yarn. And then for the bag itself, I did use a bulky five yarn. Did need two balls of yarn, which I have, I keep these now so that way I remember. Per one of these, there is 100 grams. So I used 200 grams just to make this one bag. So that's that's just the simple version of the yarn. In the video, I do go in more depth of the color, the brand, the crochet hooks, all that jazz that you're gonna need for this bag. So I think we should just get right into making it. The waffle bag is actually gonna start off as a giant rectangle and then you're gonna fold it in half to make the square so that way you have the front and the back. The dimensions of this is 25 inches, also 62 centimeters by 12.5 inches, also 31 centimeters. It will be 20 squares across and nine squares up. It's gonna be 57 chains slash stitches across and then it's going to be 18 rows up. And when the bag is folded over, it's going to be nine squares by nine squares. And how I said that there's going to be 20 squares in total, you might be thinking, what happened to those other two squares? The other two squares are kind of on the sides of the bag, so you won't really see them as much, if that makes sense. And the dimensions are a perfect square, so it's going to be 12.5 inches by 31 centimeters, both across and up and down. For this project, I am using the Charisma line of loops and thread yarn. The color is mustard, one of my favorite colors, and I do need a eight millimeter crochet hook that is also a USL 11, the eight millimeter crochet hook in question, and of course a pair of scissors. What I'm going to be doing is it's going to be a long rectangle, and then I'm going to fold it over, and then it's going to make a square. That's the idea. So instead of making two pieces and connecting them, I'm just going to make one extra long piece and fold it in half. So to start this project, you are going to have to make a slip knot. I'm going to pinch the yarn with my right hand. With my left hand, I'm going to have the yarn draped over. Then with these fingers here, I'm going to grab the yarn like this. So I'm holding it and then I'm going to twist it to make an X. So you can see this making an X. All right. So I'm making an X. Then I'm going to put all my fingers through with my left hand and I'm going to grab the working yarn just like that. And I'm going to pull through. I'm going to keep pulling. 
and then you can put your crochet hook through and then pull tightly. A lot of my videos, I do explain why I like having the longer tails and that's when I'm done a project, it's easier to weave these in because the longer the tail, the better it is to hide it because if you have like say a short tail and you try to weave it into your project, it might stick out. Well, for this project, you're going to have to chain 59 chains. It has to end on a odd number. I want to do 57 chains and have to chain the extra two because you have to build your height and to chain you're going to yarn over and you're going to catch that yarn on your hook and you're going to pull it through the only loop that you have on your hook that's it you're going to yarn over again make sure that the hook is catching your yarn i like to spin it a little bit and then that way i can pull it through the only loop on my hook and i'm just going to yarn over and pull through yarn over pull through yarn over pull through until i have the desired length which is 59. Now that all the chaining is done, what you have to do is in each one of these, you have to do a double crochet. For the first row of this project, it's just all double crochets, nothing fancy. So let's start doing that. Now, like I said, we always have to add those extra two stitches. So no matter how big your bag you want it to be, you just always have to have the two extra stitches at the end, as well as an odd number. I wanted 57 chains, which means I have to do 59 because these two chains here, when you go like this, are gonna become your very first double crochet and it builds your height of your project. Really, every single time I wanna film, it's like, oh, I'm a car, I'm gonna drive by real fast. To do a double crochet, you're going to yarn over your hook and because this is the very beginning here, we're gonna skip that stitch, skip that stitch, and we're gonna go into the third stitch down here, insert your hook, yarn over, we're gonna pull through, you're gonna yarn over again, you're gonna pull through two, you're gonna yarn over one more time and you're gonna pull through two more. On to the next double crochet, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over again, pull through one, yarn over, we're gonna pull through two loops, then we're gonna yarn over and pull through two more. So let's do that again, yarning over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two more. And so you're just gonna continue doing double crochets all the way until you get to the end. So I'm gonna flip over my project and because it is a double crochet project, I'm gonna to have to chain two. And again, this is to build my height. Now this is where the fun starts. I know, it, crocheting is fun, I like, I like crocheting. But what's gonna happen is we're actually gonna do a double crochet, a double crochet, and when it comes to the third double crochet, again, everything is just double crochets for this project. The third double crochet, we're actually gonna go and do a double crochet through a post. So the post is the height of your crochet. You'll stick your crochet hook through that and you'll do your double crochet just like that. Start off by doing our two double crochets. So we're gonna yarn over, we're gonna skip that chain we did, and then I'm gonna go through both those loops like that. How we were chaining, we only went through one. Now that we have our crochets in place, you can see the little Vs that we have. So you're gonna be going through the Vs up here. You're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Again, we're gonna yarn over. We're gonna go to the very next stitch. We're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, more. Now, this is the little funky step that we gotta remember to do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna yarn over because again, this is a double crochet. And instead of going through this stitch right here, we're gonna go down to the post that's right underneath it. And to go through the post, you're just going through like this, okay? All right, so up here is where we would normally do the stitch. We're just going down and we're gonna put our hook in between these two stitches down here. And then we're gonna go around that post and come out the other end. You're going to yarn over. I like to pinch everything down here. You're gonna pull through that post, bring it up. You're gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And what we did there is literally the only difference of a normal double crochet. Again, we're gonna do two double crochets. We're gonna skip this one here because this one here, remember, belongs to the post that we just went through. We're gonna go into the next stitch here. Insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two more. Once again, yarning over, going into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two more. And now 
we have to go through a post. We're gonna yarn over, find that next stitch, which is right here. Locate that post that's right underneath it, going under and over, just like that. We're gonna yarn over, gonna pinch, pull my yarn through that post, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. For the first leg of this race, that's the pattern. Double crochet, double crochet, double crochet into the post. It's double, double, double post, double, double, double post. And that's what you're gonna continue doing all the way down to the end. And then on the way back, we're gonna be doing the reverse, which is gonna be double crochet through a post, double crochet through another post, and then a regular double crochet through here. And it will alternate depending on which row you're on. And as you can see, the waffle pattern is already kind of starting. So because we did that double crochet here, and then we're doing a row here, this acts as a square. So the start of our waffle, this is what it's gonna look like. Each one of these squares are two rows. So one's going this way, and the other one's going back that way. This is what it looks like on the good side, and then this is what it looks like on the back. On the front, you see where we do our two regular double crochets and we see our post double crochet. And then on the back, you see the two post double crochets and then you see the regular crochet right there. Just continue doing your two doubles and then your one double through the post until you get all the way down to the end. And then when I'm at the end, I'm gonna show you how to work our way back. Now that I'm at the end, I'm gonna do my two double crochets. And then the very last one, I'm actually gonna be doing a post double crochet. So I'm gonna be sticking my crochet through there, yarning over and pulling through. Okay, so it's kind of looking like that. I'm gonna do my two double crochets. And then when I flip it over, as you can see, the posts are a lot more prominent on this side than they are on this side. Doing a double crochet through this post, a double crochet through this post, then a regular double crochet, and then two through the post, a regular double crochet. It is the opposite of what we were just doing down here. I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to skip this little post down here. I'm gonna go into the first one right here. Yarn over, pull through. Then I'm gonna yarn over, go through the next post right next to it. Yarn over, then I'm gonna go through the stitch here at the top. So right through there. Repeating, so yarning over, going through the next post, yarning over, pulling through. Yarn over, into the next post. Yarn over, then I'm gonna go through the stitch here at the top. And then back through the next two posts. And then back through the top. That's what it looks like on the back side, and here's what it's looking like on the front side. Right now, we're creating the bottom of the square, and then when we turn around and come back, we're gonna be doing the top of the square. So just keep doing this pattern, alternating two, one, two, one, all the way down, and then I'll show you what to do on our way back. Now that we're at the end, I'm gonna do my one more double crochet in this spot here. Then I'm gonna chain two flip my project over. The bottom half of a square is done and now we just have to do the top square. We're gonna go back and do the same pattern we were doing down here where it was two regular double crochets and then we're doing our double crochet through the post. Yarn over, skip that chain we just did. Insert yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Just do that twice. Yarn over, insert into the post. doing our two double crochets up here. Yarn over and through the post. And as you can see, our little squares are now forming. So now we have two rows of our squares, which is technically one, two, three, four, four rows of double crochets. And that's it. Just continue going back and forth. So right now we're just working on the height because once it's folded over, I'm going to like attach it this way and then attach it this way. Now because I need more than one ball of yarn, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to attach the other ball to it. I'm just gonna tie these two in a knot. So to do that, I'm just lining them up, tying, a knot 
just like that. Finished this last night. That's as far back as I can get my camera to show you the square. When I folded it in half, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then like a half, but that's fine. Nine across, I'm like, you know what? I want this to be a perfect square. So I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine up. So my next step that I'm gonna do, or that I started doing, is I'm actually gonna do a border. Now, I don't have that much yarn left. And when I mean I don't have that much yarn left, that's it like this. That's all the yarn I have left. Are gonna need more balls of yarn for this project than you would say like a medium sized yarn. For two balls of yarn, this is how much I get. And thankfully it is just enough. Otherwise I would have had to buy another one with the remaining yarn that I have. I decided I wanna do a little border so you can kind of see that nice border just on the top there. Let's zoom in there so you can see what it looks like with and without the border. So you can see if you like it or not. This is with the border. This is without the border. It's all personal preference. If you wanna do the border, it's a very easy step and I'm gonna show you how to do it. But if you don't, this is what it, what it looks like anyways. It pretty much looks exactly the same. For the border, what I did is when I got to the very end of my height and I knew I wanted to stop, I just started doing slip stitches. I'm just going across the top and I'm doing slip stitches. And to do that, all I'm doing is I'm putting my hook through both the little loops up here. I'm yarning over and I'm pulling through everything. Then I go into the next one, yarn over, pull through all my loops into the next one, yarn over, pull through all the loops. And that is the slip stitch. Now you could do a single crochet, you could do a scallop border, you can do whatever border you want, or you don't even have to do a border at all. If you don't wanna do the border, you can always flip over your project. And this is where you started with that chain. And the chain kind of acts as its own little border. You can just flip your project over and use the bottom as your top. But if you wanna do the border, then you know, just leave it as it is. After this is done, what's gonna have to happen is I'm gonna have to attach the them together. There are a lot of different methods on how to attach them. You can attach them with a yarn needle. The one that I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach it with my crochet hook because I already got a crochet hook, you know, and if you don't have a yarn needle at home, you don't want to buy it. You made this project with a crochet hook so you can attach it with a crochet hook. Now I don't have that much yarn left. This is all the yarn that I have left of this color. I'm going to see if it's going to work. If it's not going to work, I have a medium four weight yarn, very similar color. So I might just end up using that because I wasn't going to go buy another ball of yarn just to attach it. I'm going to attach it down here and then I'm going to go and attach it here. And this side is already attached. So I don't even have to worry about that. Let's get into attaching this. So I'm going to line up the corners like this. And from my border that I was already doing, my hook is already in here. And then I'm going to line it up across. I'm going to yarn over and pull through. The way that I showed you with the border is how I'm going to connect it. I'm just going to be doing some slip stitches. Insert into the next stitch down here, line that up, yarn over, pull through. Also make sure that you're doing this on the inside of your project and the outside of your project is this way because then you can flip it inside out. Now because of how chunky this yarn is as well as these are the sides of the project, you can't really tell where you should and shouldn't put your hook in. I guesstimate, I say this in all my videos, as long as it lines up, to the other side, it's good to go. If I zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see it, I'm just looking for any little hole over here, lining it up to the other side, yarning over, pulling through, that's it. It might not look the prettiest on the inside, but the outside, you're not even gonna notice. No, so, so close. I went to my yarn stash and I found this, which is the same thickness as this, but it's definitely the wrong color. And then I found this one, which is actually a little bit darker than this. It is a little different, but I'm gonna use this. It's all I got, it's fine. Also, what I was gonna do is for my handles, I was actually gonna make it out of this one anyways, just because I feel like if you were to make your handles out of this, it's very stretchy. And I feel like if you had put anything in the bag, the handles will really, really stretch. I am just going to tie this new thread onto here. Attaching it, all I'm doing is I'm just lining the two up like that and then just doing a simple knot. No fancy crochet wizardry going on here. Just, just that. I mean, there's a slight difference, but again, this is going to be on the inside, so you're not even going to see the color change, but this is the bottom of the bag, so it's not like anyone's going to be looking at the bottom anyways. It's all good. Turning, and then I'm just going to continue working this way. The sides are important. Like, don't get me wrong, sides are important. But the bottom is where all the weight is gonna be. Definitely make sure that your bottom of the bag is very sturdy. Now, what I like about the bottom is that you can actually kind of see where you put the crochet hook in. I'm going to be going through each one of these stitches. 
Also, I'm just realizing that because of how fine this yarn is, I probably should have switched to a five millimeter crochet hook, USH8. It, it's fine. And now that I'm at the very end, I am gonna stick my hand through the bag. It looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna do a few more just little stitches just to make sure it's extra secure. Cut the working yarn, make sure there is a little bit of a tail. Then I'm gonna yarn over, pull through, pull tightly. And what I like to do just to make sure it's extra secure, I'll go through like a loop down here, give it a few extra knots because it is the bottom of the bag. You wanna make sure it is secure. That is good to go. So let's flip this. There we go, we have the bag. This is the bottom of the bag. You can see that there is the different stitches and then where's the side? This is the side. Eh, the side doesn't look too bad, does it? Down here, you can notice that I switched the stitches. It's no big deal. This is what it is looking like. Oh, it is, it's pretty cute. I really do like it. Now it's time I have to put a bag inside. Now here's the thing, you can end this just like this. You don't gotta add anything else to it. You can stop right here. I am not gonna stop right here. I'm gonna add like an insert inside. And I've never done this to any of my crochet bags, but it's a really good idea. When you have a crocheted item made out of yarn, yarn does stretch. It's gonna pull, you know, if you put something heavy in here, say you, even if you just put some books, like I have, I have books, okay? You see, it is gonna stretch. Unless you're gonna put pieces of paper or maybe some yarn in here that doesn't weigh too much, it's probably a good idea to put an insert in here. I am gonna be sewing it though, so this is kind of a crocheting video, kind of a sewing video. If this is where you wanna stop, go for it. You don't have to do what I'm doing. But I am gonna show you what I am doing. This fabric here is what I'm gonna use, and because it is a pillowcase, I don't have to do a hem or anything. I'm just gonna cut a square. Let me hold this in my hand. I wanna cut a square like this and I'm gonna put it in the bag and then I'm going to hand stitch it because this is not gonna go through a sewing machine nicely. But I think first I'm gonna make some straps. I'm all over the place with this project, I'm sorry. I am gonna do the straps first and attach them into the bag and then I'm going to put this fabric inside. When I do attach it, I can attach it over top of the handles because the handles are gonna have to be like crocheted in. So let's go work on the handles and then we'll get back to this. For this project, I'm gonna be making two straps. They're gonna be 75 rows up and down, and then it's gonna be four single crochets across. So the measurements of it is 30 inches up and down slash 76 centimeters, and then it's gonna be one and three quarters inches across, and that's also four centimeters across. These measurements are including the border that I am putting around. Alrighty, now it's time to work on the strap, and all I'm doing for this is single crochets, and I will be using the thinner yarn because I feel like the thinner yarn will have a little less stretch to it, and that's what I want, whereas the thicker yarn, one, I ran out of it, but two, I feel like there's more stretch, and I want a tighter stitch handle. We're gonna start off with a slip knot. There we go, insert my hook. Now I wanna do four chains, which means I have to do five chains because the last chain is that extra chain before you turn yourself over, that way you get a nice clean edge. So I'm gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Three, four, five. I'm gonna skip that fifth one that I did, insert into the fourth, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. These are just single crochets, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. All right, that's what it's looking like. I'm going to chain one, flip over, skip that chain I just did, insert into the top of uh, both these little loops here. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Single crochets is just one less step than a double crochet. So you're gonna insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Into the last stitch there, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Chain one, flip over. Let's do that again. Insert my hook into both those little loops there. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Then you chain one and you work your way back. That's it. What I'm doing is I've decided that I wanna put a border on it. I've never really done a border on my straps before, but honestly, I think I'm gonna do it from now on because look at how nice this looks compared to this. Like this is what it looked like without me putting a border and this is what it looks like with the border. I think with the border looks so much nicer. So let me just show you what I'm doing for the border. I'm almost done it anyways. I'm just doing single crochets, inserting into like the next little loop. 
I'm yarning over, I'm pulling through, I'm yarning over, I'm pulling through two. So I'm gonna go into the next stitch here, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. The gaps kind of look like this. So like right here is where I'm putting my hook in and then I'm also gonna put my hook in here. So what this is, is like this little gap here is actually just like a little bit wider than this gap. And that's because that's that chain that you did. You know how you have to chain one and then move your way back. That is that chain right there. See how like that chain looks right there? Whereas this little stitch here was not the chain. This was like the end of your project before you turned it around and moved your way back. So that's why it's a little bit smaller. And I'm just doing single crochets all the way down. When I get to the last one, one more crochet, cut my yarn, yarn over, pull through, pull tightly. However long you're gonna want your strap to be, this is how long I made mine, you're gonna wanna have at least this much on the end because you're gonna have to attach that to your bag. Keep that in mind because when you're attaching it, I'm not gonna be attaching it, like lining it up like this and then sewing it. I'm actually gonna take this, put it inside my bag like this and then attach it down like so. You are gonna lose about an inch, inch and a half, maybe two inches of your strap because it will be secure secured to your bag. Just keep that into account on your measurements of your straps. Now it's time to attach my straps to my bag before I add my fabric in. I'm gonna use the same color that I made the straps with, and I'm gonna use a yarn needle. Yes, I finally found a yarn needle. I have been missing it for months. And know what's funny is that this isn't even the one that I was missing. I was missing a green one, which means this one that I found, I probably haven't seen it since last summer. I'm very happy that I found my yarn needle. You also can use a crochet hook to crochet it in, but I'm going to use a yarn needle today. To start off, I'm going to turn my bag inside out, and how I'm gonna do my handles like this. So the one handle is gonna be on one side, it's gonna go over, and then I'm gonna put another one on the other side. Because I'm actually gonna cut a piece of yarn. I'm gonna put it through my needle. Let's say like right here. I'm gonna take my yarn needle into the bag, insert into my strap, pull through. And then with this little guy here, I'm just gonna tie that into a knot. We'll double knot that just to be safe. There we go. Make sure it's nice and square. And all I'm doing is just going through a loop of string here. I'm gonna go through the border that I had made. And yeah, just gonna stitch it in like a sewing project. And I'm making sure that I'm not going through all the way to the front because I don't want this thread to show in the front of the bag. And then I'm even going to attach it up here too, but not too high up. Just don't wanna make sure that it's super secure through my strap and then through right there. And then back in. And then I'm gonna end where I started. Tie a few knots in there. Just to hide these extra strings, I am going to weave my hook through. And just pulling on it, come on. There we go. And just cutting all the extra strings. So that's how I attach mine. And of course, like I said, I am gonna be putting a layer of fabric on top of this, so I'm not even gonna see this when my whole bag is done. I'm going to fold it like this, and then I'm gonna attach it here, and then I'm gonna do the same to the other side. We have my bag, I'm still attaching the straps, and I'm just gonna use my cutter. You can definitely use scissors, but I have my cutter here. Leaving a little bit of extra room because I know I'm gonna have to have to seam allowance. Inside out, I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine, I'm gonna stitch this way, and then I'm gonna stitch this way. Just finished sewing on all of my straps, and now I'm just going to add this in. What I'm actually doing is I'm making sure that my fabric, good side is on the inside, because putting the insert into my bag, when I open it up, I'm gonna wanna see the cute fabric. I'm pinning it down right below the border here, so that way when it is up, you're not gonna see the inside as much. Then with some white thread, I wasn't too sure if I was gonna use white or like a matching yellow, but I'm gonna use some white. You're gonna see it stitched on here, but I'm not gonna go all the way through that you're gonna see the stitching on the outside of the bag. And I'm just gonna hand sew it with a regular needle.
Now, just like the waffle bag, I'm actually gonna be doing a rectangle for the butter and then folding it in half. It'll be 20 single crochets across and then it'll be 11 rows up and down. And when I fold it over, it will be a perfect square. So it will be 3.5 inches slash 8.5 centimeters across and up and down. The last thing I'm gonna do for this project, which I think is just like a little extra touch, is I'm actually gonna make myself a little cube of butter out of this color. Now, while filming this, I have seemed to have lost my favorite crochet hook, so now I'm gonna continue it with this little yellow one that I have. I'm gonna use this color here, because I feel like this is the most buttery color that I currently own, it is a medium four weight. It tells me to use a six millimeter crochet hook, but uh, eggplant. Butterscotch. Why does it say eggplant? Oh, maybe that's for the pattern here. Never mind. This color is actually called butterscotch, so I feel like it's fitting for this project. I'm basically going to be making myself a rectangle and then folding it in half, very similar to the actual bag that I was doing, where I made a big rectangle, folded it in half to make a square. I'm going to be doing the same for the little piece of butter. I'm going to start off with, of course, my slip knot. Insert my hook. I'm going to chain. Let's see, ten, and see where that goes. That's too small. So let's do 21, I guess. 11, 12. I think that's good. And then if I fold it over, that's essentially how long I want it. And I want it to be a perfect square. Remember, you have to chain that extra one before turning yourself around. And I'm going to do all these in single crochets. This little square is the exact same steps as the handle because I'm just doing single crochets. The only difference is that I'm going to be folding it over. I'm going to skip that 21st stitch there, go into here, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. I am just doing single crochets. Oh my goodness. I'm so used to having my metal one, like my metal hook, that this plastic one is not my favorite. That's okay though. I don't have time to find the metal one at the moment. I gotta get this video done. I'm at the end, so I'm gonna do my last single crochet. I'm going to chain one. I'm gonna work my way back, so I'm gonna skip that chain I just did, go into the 20th one, and work my way back. Like I said, the exact same steps that I did for the straps, I'm gonna be making this little square of butter. I found my crochet hook. Ended up doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So I did 11 rows up when I fold it over. It's a nice little square. So now it's time to close it up. I'm gonna do it the same way that I've been attaching everything, and that's just some slip stitches. You're just gonna fold over, and I am going to attach it here and then attach it here before I attach it at the top. So just inserting, yarning over, pulling through. That's it. Flip that. Now I did end up getting this, I think it's polyfill, polyfill or whatever. It's, you know, pillow stuffing. Adding it into here. I want to see what that looks like. I'm not too sure. Like it's not a set in stone idea. I just want to give it a little bit more volume. I want it to be like a nice thick square piece of butter. I just need to close it up. Cut that, yarn over, pull through, pull tightly, push my ends in. That is my little cube of butter. I probably should have attached the butter to the bag before I put the liner in, but here I am. And just like attaching the straps, I'm going to use my yarn needle and attach the butter. A piece of yarn underneath where the butter is gonna be. Through the back of the butter, tie that up. And now that I'm back at the front, I'm just going to tie it up real good. And then I'm just gonna hide my ends. See again, this probably would have been better if I hadn't done the inside of the bag, because then I could have just like sewn it through to the back. That will do it for this bag. That's that's it. <laughs> And the bag is obviously done. I mean, you saw it at the beginning of the video, but here it is again at the end. I think it turned out quite well. For the little butter, I do really like the little bit of pillow stuffing that I put in there. You know, it just gives it a little bit more dimension. That's a step that you don't have to do if you don't want to. If you watched the whole video, then you would have seen me put books into this bag without the liner. So now I'm gonna show you what it looks like with the liner. These were the books that I had put in it. So let's try it with the liner. There. 
it didn't even move because the liner keeps the books in place and the yarn itself will not stretch. So that is the reason why I put the liner in. And as you can see, the handles, they're not stretching that much. They do stretch a little bit. I mean, like it's yarn and there's some heavy books in the bag. If I were to have used this yarn and done a single crochet, I feel like these handles would have really stretched out. That's why I went with the thinner medium yarn for the handles. Yeah, I think this bag just turned out so cute. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. I think that is it for this video. If you're new to my channel, you like sewing, crafting, but mainly thrifting, why not subscribe? You can also follow me on my Instagram and my TikTok, which is Fancy Dinosaur Tea Party. I think that is it. So y'all have a good day now.